Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to play with the notifications. We'll start in 10 seconds. First, let me thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you all for your membership, your support really means a lot. And also thanks to everybody who watched, subscribed or liked my videos. Thank you. And now let's get cracking with today's notifications video. The topic for today's video is notifications. We already did cover a bunch of notifications, there are still a lot more to cover and I will cover them in future videos. But we have so far covered the Telegram notifications, the application notifications, text-to-speech notifications, persistent notifications, Synology chat, etc. And every time we tested them, we tested them individually. But what if you could have something that would be able to handle all the notifications to all the notify services that you have from one script? And no, I will not be talking about the script that I made. This is script that Carlo made, but I have adapted it to suit my needs and also to support not just the iOS platform, but also Android. So thank you, Carlo, for this. This has been really helpful in the last more than a year. The link to Carlo's repository and the original script will be down in the description of the video. Let's first see what this script can be used for. No matter how many notifications you have in your system, this script will help you to handle any case or any way you want to send a notification. So, for example, if you look at the difference between the Telegram notifications and SMS, although I do not have SMS enabled in my system, SMS has only text. You cannot send anything except maybe the emoji, but it will not understand any URL or whatever else I send to it. On the other hand, Telegram can understand much more. In Telegram, for example, you can send both title and the message, while in SMS you cannot. So is there a way to combine and make a script to be able to handle all the possible aspects of the notification platform? And this is something that Carlo did. And I really, really once again thank him for that. So how does this script work and what will you get from the script? If you look here, I have my Discord, I have Telegram notifications, I have CSV or comma separated file, family notification, this is group of the mobile devices, LG TV notification, some individual phones, and also the speakers or Chromecast devices. So how does this work? First of all, you have to create notification or notification platforms. Second, group them if you need to group them. For example, I have parents, where my wife and I are, and then I have family, where we all are, uh, excluding the dog. And when I want to send specific message, it depends if this is message for parents or if this is a message for a family. For example, if there is a gas leak, I send that to everybody, that is family. On the other hand, if there is an open door notification in the morning or in the evening, I send that only to my wife and me. And that really simplifies handling where and how the messages are sent and processed. But the second thing and the best thing is that you can create additional attributes. So if I, for example, in the parent script add my wife and my mobile phone, but I also add Telegram and, for example, Discord, depending on the channel where the notification will be sent, there may or may not be some individual attributes. If I send it to my Home Assistant mobile application, I can, for example, change the color of the notification. It can be green, yellow or red, depending on what you like and what is the emergency of the notification. Second thing is that you can group them. For example, there can be notification grouped weather. And anything related to the weather, be it just a simple information of the outside temperature or metal alarm warning, can be grouped in that group. Third thing is that you can also push links. So, for example, if I send that notification to my TV, I will only see text, the message. But if I send it to the application or the Telegram, I will see title, message and the link that I can check and create some action. So, let's start looking at the script itself. The link to that script, both my version that I adapted that includes both the iPhone and Android support and also the original script will be included, of course, in the description of the video. 
this is the script and I did put a lot of description in it so you can understand it better. But how it works? It creates a notification engine or notify engine script that has a sequence. First thing that is checked is the condition and the condition is are the text notifications enabled or not. This script doesn't work with text to speech at this point. This is something that I will be trying to adapt either directly into this script or I will be creating additional called notify engine text to speech that will handle text to speech part of the notifications inside my home. Next thing, we look at the service. Depending on who is called, it calls a specific notification platform. So if in the who variable we have my wife's name, then it will select her mobile phone as the notification platform. If, for example, I put in a who field variable parents, it would call the notification platform called parents. But how do you define parents? Well, that's easy. You simply have to create a group. Let me show you. Here, in the Notify platform, I have created a couple of groups. So I have under Discord, this is me calling my mobile phone and also send it to Discord. Then I have Clock Me, which is just a text-to-speech notification platform pushing text to my Chromecast device. Then we have Family Notification, which pushes notification to all our mobile phones, plus the Telegram, plus the Synology chat. And then we have Parents Notification, which is my wife, me and also Telegram. So this is a simple way on how to combine different notification platforms and then just call one single notification platform to push notifications on the different services. Let's go back to the script. So as I said, in the first part we select who will receive the notification. Then we define variables. And these variables here depend on the platform that is receiving notification. As I said, if I push it to my LG TV, only this part will go because LG TV notification platform doesn't understand, for example, title, target, attachments, tags, groups, sticky, etc. What is the difference between Carlos version of the script and my version? Carlos script works great with the iOS phones. But at the time of me adapting this script, I didn't have a single iPhone at my house. Yeah, unfortunately, one of them has landed in the meantime. So I needed to adapt that these things work with the Android platform. And as you can see here, there are some Android specific notification platform things and there are some iOS specific things for the notification platform. Some of these provide the same functionality, for example, group is the same thing as thread ID in the iOS, or tag, which is the same as APNS Collapse ID. And this notification platform should work with both Android and iOS, although I didn't do extensive check of the iOS platform. So now you copy this script to your PC and how do you call it? Well, let's start by creating one simple notification. I have created an empty automation called Simple Notify Script. I will give it an alias and it will be called simple notification. A good practice is to give it ID. And for that, I'll right click here and press generate UUID. Next, we will create trigger. Platform, sun, event, sunset. If you want, you can put offset here, but as this is a simple automation, I will skip it. For the condition, we do not have to put anything because this simple script will be triggered anytime there is a sunset. Now let's create action. And action is used to call this script. Action, service, script, notify engine, because this is the name of my script. And how do you define the name of the script? If we go back on the top of it, you can see that it's called notify underscore engine. And if you put this code, as I said, this code will be available on the link down in the description of the video. If you put it inside your script's YAML file or in the script section of your configuration YAML file, this script will be called by that name. Now we have to specify data that will be pushed or provided for the script. Data. And we will start with the title. Let's open this and say sunset 
is here. Then we provide the message itself. Message can be split into three lines or you can create three lines of text that can be individually separated. Value 1. This is first line of text. Value 2. Second one. Value 3. Third one. And as you can see, you have really a lot of space to create very long messages. And it's also very good for me because I like to talk too much. You do not have to use all three lines, but if you wish to use, you can use them. Next, let's specify something that I usually put at the top here. Who will receive the notification? And in the who, we have to put something from the available notification services. It has to be something from here, because in this script here, you have to define what each of those variables will be calling in the background. I will select Discord. And if we look here, Android Discord will push notifications to mobile device, my mobile phone, and also to Discord. So now we have defined what is the title, what is the message, and where we want to push it. And this is it. You do not have to add anything else. And if you set the message, it will be delivered both to Discord server, but also to my mobile phone. But we can add more. One of the things that we can, for example, add is tag ID. And it can be whatever tag or whatever group you can imagine. So, for example, it can be information, or it can be system, or it can be weather, or emergency. You can give this group whatever name you want. I will call this information because it doesn't have anything specific. This is not related, for example, to my system, which may include Home Assistant or Synology. It is not something related to weather because it's not called by either Metro Alarm or any of my weather integration. It's just information. Next thing, for example, can be group. This group will be in this instance either, for example, info or home or whatever you want. So how do those groups work? If I would push a tag ID information with the net message to a group home, it would stay in the group home. Then I can push the same information, but to group, for example, outside, and it will keep it in a separate group. So I would see both of those uh, information or both of those messages on my mobile phone. Then I can also define color. Unfortunately, you cannot just type yellow because it would not work, you have to provide hex code. Let me type FF0000 and it will change the color of the message. There are various other tags. For example, you can use sticky, true, and this will make message stick. Default is false. You can try and play with all those tags and all the things here. The additional things that you can play with here is the click action or URL. If you put here click action or URL, that can be same as putting the URL in the persistent notification because the message that will be displayed, if you click on it, will point you or forward you to the URL you have specified. And the last thing I have to do here is add target ID. If I'm using Telegram or Discord, these require specific ID of the channel where I want to push the notification. And as I said, this one will try to push notification to mobile phone and Discord. That is why I have to add the target ID and the ID of my channel on the Discord server. Target ID. And I will paste here the link to my secrets file with the Discord GitHub ID. And this will push this notification if you check on my Discord server where all my GitHub issues are posted. Let's now save this check configuration and reload automations. If we would now go to automations, type here simple, run it. I should receive notification on my mobile phone. And here it is, you will be seeing it now on the screen. And also, if we go to Discord server, you can see that we now have, this is the first line of text, second one and third one. So this is notification that has been pushed simultaneously to both my mobile phone and the Discord server. But how do you install and customize it in your own setup? Let me show you. 
what you have to do, you have to add to your scripts file. So either you have a script defined inside a separate file, and then you use this line script include scripts.yaml, or if you do not have external file, you should probably somewhere in your configuration file add script column. But since I'm using external file, in the scripts file, at the end, I will copy and paste from my GitHub repository the code here. Let's paste it. And let's just see if it's aligned correctly. It is. So this is notify sequence condition ID. It checks just one condition, but since this is condition OR, you can put multiple conditions here. But since this is my recording setup, I do not have this, so I can remove it. The next thing you have to customize is this. I would suggest that you first think of what will be your default notification service. Let me quickly go back to Home Assistant and let's see what notification platforms we have here. So we have Bearded Bot, Discord, LG TV, Sino Chat, and this is the group called TV Telegram and TV Telegram Discord. So let's say that the default one will be Sino Chat. Then I would change and replace this with the Sino Chat. This one will catch all the notifications that haven't been properly called. Next, I want to put here me and I will change this with Bearded Bot. Next one would be, for example, myself. And this would be LG TV. Let me remove kits. And here we'll call this media. It will be TV Telegram and media mega media will be TV Telegram and Discord. So in the future, anytime I need to push notification to my TV, Telegram and Discord, I would put in a variable who mega media. If I would want to send message just to bearded bot, I would put me. And this is the only thing you need to do on your system to adapt this script to work with your own configuration. The script that you see here is not the latest version. I already have implemented on my system the latest version and the link to that script will be in the description of the video. The difference is that there is a big, big comment section on the front of the script where you can see all the tags that you can use in the notifications. Once again, thank you, Carlo, for this script, because it really did help me to manage my notifications better. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I will be working a bit more, I hope, during the vacation, if I feel like it, to add text-to-speech functionality. It does have some differences, and the one thing that I also want to implement here is the quiet time. So, for example, if I select in my system that during the night I do not want to hear text notifications, I still would really like to receive a mobile notification. So, these are the things I will be working in the future, and I really would like to hear if this script has helped you or maybe inspired you to create your own script. And if you do have your own way of how to manage multiple notifications from a single script or automation, then please drop me a line. And this is it. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. It was a bit different and it was a little bit... Yeah, you need to concentrate both to watch and follow me, but I really do hope that you did find it interesting. And if you did find it interesting, please give me a thumbs up because it really means a lot to me. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates and hopefully streams. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.